Hello, everybody. Let's get into it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I hope you're feeling euphoric. Hello, Gozia. You got number one. Lolly, you got number two. Gertie, you got number three. You're all in there. Emma Rude. Emma Ruji? I'm not sure how to say your name, but hello. Good morning. How are you doing? Let's get into here. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hope you're having an amazing day and you're surviving your week just like me, working a lot these days. All right, we're good to go. Amazing. All right, let's see who else is in this chat here. Pilar, hello, Pilar. Edgar, my man, is in the chat. Mudasa, what's going on with you, buddy? Albina's here. Hello, Albina. Fedor will be here shortly, I'm sure. Brahim is here. Greetings from Morocco. I'm going to go to Morocco one day, Brahim. One of these days, I'll be there. Wafa, wafa. Hello, hello. Yeah, it's me, Pilar. I'm right here. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, Amina's here. Lolly's here. Dale's here. Squad is here. That's right, Dale. We're doing good. I think we're doing good. I'm feeling all right. Caffeinated. Ready to go. Let's do this. Ilyada. Ilyada. Hello, Ilyada. Saim, what's up? Uh, who else we got in here? Ziad. Spider-Man is in the house. What's up, homies? Marjorie, what's up? Zineb's back. Sweet Samuel. Ciao to you, buddy. Uh, Mirili, hello. And Monaco, what's up? All right, everybody. We're all here. We're ready to go. So let me start you off with a question, maybe a question that you need to ask yourself. And here it is. It is this one. The question is, do you have good manners? Because that's exactly what we're going to be talking today, and I will share that link with you. So if you are new, please take this. No, sorry. Let's try that again. Let's try this one more time. Please take this, open it up, and you'll have access to everything that we're talking about today, questions, any new vocabulary, new awesome vocab that we talk about will be there. So let's talk about it. Welcome squirrels and pandas and whatever shows up in Google Docs. Uh, how are your manners? Let's take a look, shall we? Manners. Now, let's, let's look at bad manners, because these are some of the things we're going to talk about. We're also going to talk about good manners. What should you do? I don't know why this guy keeps popping up. Who is this dude? Bad manners is a ska band, so some dude. Okay, and that's not what I don't want this dude with his tongue. I want bad manners and good manners. That's what I actually want. And you don't get really interesting stuff here, but we got a few ideas. Okay, okay, let's this guy, this little Japanese boy here, do's and don'ts. Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. Mm, yeah, okay, not the most interesting. Anyways, let's go back here. This is what we're going to talk about. So tell me about yourself. Do you have good manners or bad manners? I personally have terrible manners. I know I need to work on it. And I lived in Japan, and Japan is pretty, pretty bloody polite. So tell me about yourself. How are your manners? And let's talk about it. Wava. Yes, I have. Why Wava? How do you have good manners? In what situation do you have good manners? Gertie says, I hope so. I'm sure you do, Gertie. You do have good manners. I can confirm that. Gozia, yes, I do have good manners and hate when people don't. Okay, well, I will try not to do anything super rude today, Gozia. Uh, Amir, no, I don't have good manners. I am not polite, but I'm honest. Hmm, there we go. Some people do that. Some people are... Let me put a new word on there. And there's a few words here which I'd like you to learn as well. But let me, uh, some people are blatantly, here's a new word for you. I think we used this one before. Blatantly honest. Basically means totally honest. You just, you don't, you don't sugarcoat. Oh, that's a good word. Sugarcoat. Do you know sugar and coating? If you sugarcoat the truth, it's kind of like you are making the truth. It's like a little bit of a lie. Remember, we talked about lies before. So don't sugarcoat. If you have something bad to say, if you have to tell somebody the truth, and the truth is not easy to say, sometimes we say, oh, people sugarcoat it. Oh, like, you know what? On Friday, you just have a little test to do. Not a big deal. But actually, the test is super huge, and it's like three hours long. I sugarcoated. I kind of lied a little bit, or I exaggerated that. I said, oh, it's not so difficult, but it was. So sugarcoat means to... Mm. Make something sound better. Sound better. Make something bad sound better. Mm -hmm. There we go. Nice one. Good word. Sugarcoat. Blatantly honest means totally honest. Totally honest and could cause, could, could be rude put it like that. All right, what else we got here? 
no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Thank you, Hadel. You'll get there, you'll get there. Uh, yes, most of my time in any situation, good. Buddy, you are a latecomer, but that's okay, buddy. I never saw you walk into class, so don't worry. Hello. Lolly, I'm very polite. I never say bad words. Lolly, come on. Let's be honest here. Let's be frank. Yes, uh, Brahim, Frank Lee with an L-Y means honest. Um, and sometimes we say that. We say, to be frank, I don't think it's a good idea. And the joke there, there's a joke. You say, oh, to be frank. And you say, oh, hello, Frank. That's a joke. It's a teacher joke. Uh, Fedor, there he is. He just got off the boat, and he's with us now. Bushra, hello. What's up? Joel, what's up, Joel? How you doing, buddy? Uh, Dale, with random people, I have good manners, but with my friends and acquaintances, it doesn't bother me. OK, good word. Uh, and that's a, that's a good word we should use as well, right? An acquaintance. I think we've looked at this word before. What is an acquaintance? An acquaintance is somebody. So basically, you know this person, but they're not your friend. Just you know them, like maybe somebody at work. You see them sometimes, but they're not exactly a close friend. We call them an acquaintance. So how are your manners with acquaintances? Person you know, person you know, not considered a friend, but not a friend, not a friend. There we go, good, nice one. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Ziad, I would say it depends on the people that are surrounding me, definitely. Hello, Timo, great name. Ali, what's up? Straight up. Yes, Ziad. Hello, guy. Hello, Hisham. Hello, back at you, guy. When I'm in a good mood, I have manners, okay? And you're, when you're in a bad mood, there's no manners. Good here out. Good here out. Uh, yes. Oh, good haircut. Thank you, Hisham. Thank you very much. I actually did it myself. So if it's looking not horrible, that's all me, baby. Uh, Lolly, I'm courteous, well-mannered, and a civilized girl, exclamation point. Well, anyone who uses exclamation points, Lolly, I question, I question, I question their honesty. I do. Uh, Mudasar, I really have good manners, no A, just manners are uh, many manners, so no A, so just manners. Uh, I am courteous and amiable. Amiable means friendly. Good word. If you didn't know another way to say friendly, you can say amiable friendly. I'm amiable with people. I am all together being frank with myself. So you're honest with yourself. That's the most important person to be honest with. Uh, Madi, that's not an acquaintance or an acquaintance. Uh, not sure what the question is, Madi. Mm, yeah, sorry, but can you do that question one more time? Uh, all right, so let's go here. Let's jump in here. So now we've answered that question. So let's go here. I want to I look at some different situations, and then we're going to do some discussion, because the cool thing about this whole group, all of us being from different countries, is that you can get some pretty awesome discussions going on. So if you ever go and study English in Vancouver or somewhere around the world, there's a couple things you should do. Have interesting conversations about manners. That's a good topic. And one of the funnest conversations you can ever have with international people is what are the animal sounds? Particularly, what does the chicken say in your country? Okay, what's the sound of a chicken? And you will be astonished at how different the chicken sounds in each country. So that's pretty interesting. Dog sounds, chicken sounds, pretty fun conversation, especially with a few drinks. Okay, so here we go. Next one. What are some different situations when you need, uh, sorry, when you need to require manners? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. What are some different situations when you need manners? You have to have good manners, right? Polite, friendly, don't do something bad, don't do something rude, good behavior, good. And you got, that's exactly what. During a job interview, definitely, and we're gonna talk about that one right away. Give me some other ones. What are some different situations when you have to be polite? You have to have good manners, do the right way, don't do, the, do things the wrong way. Give us some other ones. Madi, about the word you wrote, an acquaintance. I'm asking if it's an acquaintance or not. <laughs> Sorry, Madi, I still don't understand the question. The, road, the word acquaintance, I'm asking if it's an acquaintance. A, like, for example, a acquaintance or an acquaintance. If, if that's the question, it's a-n, an acquaintance. Because of the a sound on acquaintance, you say an acquaintance. But if it's university, the, the university sound is a y. So we actually say, ah, 
university because the sound is not A-E-I-O-U, if that makes sense. All right, what else we got? Meeting someone for the first time when asking someone to do something for you. So basically a favor, okay, all right, that could be a good one. There might be some polite language or some manners that you have to do when you're doing someone a favor. Let's add that one, that's a good one. Doing somebody a favor. Nice one. What are some other situations when you need good manners? Uh, no, 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 no. Yes, good idea, Bushra. Be honest with yourself. When you are in a restaurant, yes. At a restaurant, you would need good manners. And I kind of said at the dinner table, so maybe I'll just keep that one because it's kind of similar. What's another situation? So we said restaurant, doctor's office. You need good manners when you go to the doctor's. Family, sure. What situation with family? That's the one, and I got that one. No, I didn't. I did have that one. I guess I had it before. Yes, when you meet your in-laws. So wh who are in-laws? In-laws are your, for if you get married, you get new parents, right? You get a, a new mother, an extra mother, and an extra father. Those are your in-laws. So it's a noun. Uh, your uh, spouses. When you get married, you get extra parents. Your spouse's parents. Your in-laws, there we go. Your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your brother-in-law, right? Okay, cool, next one. Ah, very nice one, visiting new countries. Uh, okay, so let's go here, go, just go one. At a wedding, at least in church, yeah. You're right, no, you're right. In, in church, I'll put everything, I'll put uh, mosque, or a synagogue, any kind of religion, or a temple. Synagogue, how do you spell it? Synagogue, temple. Any kind of religion, uh, there's definitely manners are a good one. That's a really good one. What else we got? Mm, workplace, <laughs> not my workplace. Whoo, good times in my workplace. Uh, visiting new countries, great one. Yes, absolutely. Because you don't know the manners, right? And we're going to talk about that later. Visiting new countries. You definitely, you might have to do some research, right? Um, about manners. Ooh, that's a good topic. We could do that. That could be fun. What should you do? Oh, yeah, we're going to do, a, I think I've just created a, an amazing new idea. And we're going to give an introduction. We're going to give, a, um, we're going to give you some tips. Oh, this is perfect. This is amazing. Uh, we're going to give you some tips what you should do when you come to our country. So if I go to your country or you come to mine, we're gonna make a list of tips, things you should do and things you shouldn't do. <gasps> Good teacher moment for me. Uh, so what am I gonna call that? Let's call that, mm, the vocal, I don't know, we'll call that speaking. Uh, that's a great idea. What are some manners you need to know? Don't do this now, we're gonna do that later before Coming to your country. Make a list. Boom. Of the top, I don't know, six. Six or seven. Let's do eight. Because there's a lot of rules. Canadians have Canadians love rules, so we're gonna I'm gonna give you like a million things that you should do when you come to Canada. And it'll be this will be interesting. I, I'm a, I'm looking forward to that. I'm gonna make time for that. Okay. Formal events, meeting your boyfriend's parents. Yeah, we talked about that. Maybe in-laws or boyfriend's parents. When you, ooh, when you're invited to, uh, invited by your boss. Oh, man, you should ask Japanese people about that. Any Japanese people in here? Unfortunately not. Invited somewhere with boss. Because there's a lot of rules in Japan, probably Korea as well, maybe some other countries. A lot of rules, like there's a drinking rule. If you get invited, if you're Japanese and you get invited by the Japanese boss. You cannot go home until the boss is ready, and usually the boss wants to drink because he works hard, and he doesn't get to go out as much as they want. No Japanese people get to go out as much as they want. You can't go home until the boss goes, and if the boss wants you to drink, you have to drink. You have to sit there and drink until your boss says like, okay, you're okay now, or until you pass out. How's that for culture? That's interesting. All right, any others? <laughs> uh, Mira says, I hate my in-laws. They are so annoying. Well, then, 
This lesson is not for you, Amr. Good luck. When talking to a higher person, so a person in a higher position than you, uh, and I have this one later, we're going to talk about it. Uh, when talking to your to elderly people, older people than you, there are definitely some rules about that. When being in a classroom, not my classroom, Z, I do anything goes, almost anything goes in my classroom. I'm cool with that. When you're in Rome, yeah, travel. When you visit a new place, the rule, yes, exactly, the Roman rule. When you be a student structure, when you are a student, maybe, yeah, a little teacher-student relationship, yeah, let's, yeah, let's add that. Um, when you are in school, definitely there's some rules there. Keep the F-bombs to a minimum, or at least try to. If I, if I drop some F-bombs on here, I'll probably get blocked or flagged on YouTube, so I try not to do it. Okay, so we got some situations, so let's do this. Let's do, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna try to choose the most interesting, and we're gonna have a little chat about it, because I'm gonna try to choose the topics that are very different in each country. So let's see, what, where should we start? Uh, I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna start with the, 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 a very common one that everybody has, because I know there's lots of rules here. So here's number one. What are good and bad manners in these situations? And here's the first situation. So you tell me what are good manners and bad manners when you are having dinner at the table. So let's take a look, shall we? So you, you tell me what are good manners, good behavior, and bad behavior when you're eating food with your family. Good manners at the dinner table. Perfect. And let's see what we got here. Let's see if we got any photos here that are, these are all kids' photos. Smile, I don't, that guy, yeah, okay, that guy could be, that guy could be me, actually. Look at that. That guy kind of looks like me with my hairstyle. If I were married and had some kids, that would totally be me, right? What do you think? You see the resemblance? Let me, let me give a little turn. See? It's totally me. Hmm. Interesting. Found myself. Here we go. Like this guy. What's this dummy doing? Being a fool. That's what he's doing. Ah, nice word, Martaza. Very nice. Good. The word of the day is slurp. Please add that to your list. I already added it. Uh, a sound you make when you are eating soup. You your soup. You're, in some countries, you're not supposed to do that except one, and I will show you. I will tell you which country. At least one or two. It's okay. I'll, tell, I'll show you which one, so you can go there and slurp your soup. A sound you make when a sound you make when you eat or drink. When you drink or eat certain foods. Slurp. Do you know what a Slurpee is? Have you guys ever been to 7-Eleven and they have a Slurpee? That's where it gets its name from. Check it out. Let me show you a Slurpee. That's a Slurpee from 7-Eleven. So the sound is and that's why they call it a slurp because we think it sounds kind of similar. So good. Don't slurp. That's a good one. Burning. <laughs> Starting fires? I agree. Bad, bad manners, Ziad. No burning. Uh, bad behavior. Avoid burping. Yes. And there's the other one. Let's look at Barney from The Simpsons because there's only one uh, Barney Simpsons burp. Here we go. This is the one that we've, I've been waiting for. There's only one way to teach this word, and it's that man right there. If you've seen The Simpsons, you know what I'm talking about. Let's get it in a GIF. There it is. Come on. Yeah, there you go. See what he's going? There we go. That's the one right there. Belching. You can also call it belching or burping. Let's keep that. That's great. He just does it all the time. There you go. Okay, cool. Very nice. Well done. So that's called burp or belch, and it's a sound you make when gas comes up your throat. Easy. Good explanation, teacher. What else we got? Uh, turn your muffle to a chump. Turn your muffle. What's a muffle, Dale? I'm not sure about that one. Uh, when you do strange sounds, yeah, you make strange sounds. Don't make... I don't know how to explain it. When you... I don't know, you're just a noisy eater, no? How would you explain that? Don't smack, nah, we don't really have a way. Just don't be a noisy eater. So I'll do that, noisy eater. That's a no-no. Make noise when eating. It's just annoying and kind of gross, sounds gross. Make noise when eating. 
What else? Ooh, yeah, there we go. Don't put your elbows on the table. Apparently, this is a bad idea. I don't know. It's so comfortable, though, right? It's like the table was designed for your elbows. It's the perfect height, right? And you can just do this. Uh, lick your fingers. Yeah, that's kind of not good, right? Lick, lick when you lick your fingers. I'm not going to Google that, but you know what I mean. Lick your fingers. I'll just put lick. You lick ice cream, and some people lick their fingers. I don't know how to explain it. Google it. Uh, elbows on the table when you have your phone. Yeah, when you have your phone at the table, or you're checking your mess, checking your your Facebook or your Insta. Don't call it Insta. It's IG now. Or I'm so confused about how to talk about those things. Chewing meals. Yeah, with your mouth closed. It's good manners. I agree. Burping is okay in Morocco. 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 We're going to Morocco, everybody. You can burp there, and it's cool. Eat like a pig. There's a nice combo. Eat like a pig. Eating a lot, eating fast. And if you if you know that one, let me teach you a new one. So eat like a pig just means you eat like an animal. And another way to eat like a pig, so it's kind of like really messy. Uh, being messy when eating. And if you can eat like a pig, so uh, here's another one you can say. Wolf. You know what a wolf is? Let me show you a picture of a wolf. This is a wolf. There we go. That's a wolf. How does a wolf eat? Very quickly. So in English, we say wolf something down. So if you're super hungry and you don't have time, you might wolf down some food and then go. So you can actually use, if you're super hungry and you eat like an animal, you can say wolf something down, which basically means eat really, eat like an animal. Eat fast, like an animal. Some people wolf down their food. Some people don't breathe. Don't breathe when they're eating. They just whoop, they they swallow. They inhale their food. That's something we say. Inhale your food. Uh, this is inhale. That's exhale. So you inhale your food. You don't even like chew it. You just whoop, and it's gone. So inhale uh, is a verb you could also use for food. Eat super fast without chewing, kind of like without chewing. Eat super fast, just means eat super fast. Uh, what else we got? Chew, yeah, chew with your mouth open, that's the worst, right? If someone's like seafood, you know, you can seafood, that's kind of gross. Eating off others' plates, oh man, Ziad, but what if they got good stuff? What if they got like, you only got vegetables left over and they like got all the good stuff and just like, hey, what's up? How about that? When you eat like Homer, yeah, don't do that. They'll correct it. Try to muffle your chop. No idea what that means. Let me let me Google muffle, muffle your your what your chomp. Oh, okay. Don't make noise. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Muffle your chomp. Okay, interesting. Yeah, muffle. Muffle means like muffle your voice so nobody can hear you talking. So muffle is you know what a muffler is on a car. A car has that thing at the back. It makes the noise quieter. That's a muffler. So muffle is kind of like cover. Muffle your your. Muffle your chomping. I'm just going to use muffle because I think that's the that's the word there. Muffle. Make quieter. Cool. Hello, Michael. Uh, scraping your plate. Yeah. Not a good idea. Scrape something. So scrape is a is a verb we use to make make noise by rubbing. That's scrape. Not rubbing, make noise by, I don't know, I don't know, make noise by contact. Scratch, scrape. Can you hear that? Okay, there we go. Glob down, nice word, Mudas, or glob down. I don't know if that's a real word or if it's kind of a creative word, but it's a good one. Scrape your plate, elbows on the table, pushing your plate when you have finishing. You don't push your plate, talk about politics or money. Oh, that seems very specific. No pol, yeah, but it's, it's a good idea because people get excited about talk, politics. Don't talk about politics when you're at the dinner table. Chew with your mouth closed. Stuff, yeah, stuff your face. Don't stuff your face. That's a good word. Uh, stuff. You know a teddy bear? What's inside a teddy bear? We call it stuff, just a stuffed bear. So if you stuff your face, it's like you put as much stuff into your face as possible. Don't stuff your face. It's not, it's not polite. Put as much food in your mouth as possible. <laughs> in your mouth as possible. Yes, don't do that. Okay, very nice. Uh, double dip. Oh, Brahim, you had to go there. I, I can't stop. Now I have to say that. 
Double dip. Okay, so there's there's a TV show which was famous for doing this. Double dip Seinfeld. If you've never seen this TV show, it's called Seinfeld. It's pretty good. I will. S I would like to send you this. Okay, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send it to you. I can't watch it. I'm not allowed to, but I can send you this. Go to YouTube. Okay, so I'm gonna send you this video. This is called Double Dipping. So go ahead, check out this video. That's what it is. Seinfeld. Okay, so double dip. Yes, don't do that. That's a, that's a no no. Double dip. And I guess it's a verb in this situation. You can it can be a noun. Uh, dip two times. You'll you'll understand after you watch the video. Lila, it's okay. That's cool. Didn't see you come in. Uh, Mateus, wash your hands before eating. Also a good idea. Mirili, hello. Don't start to take away the plates and pans. Someone's still eating. I agree. Okay, let's. There's so many things. Wow, I I didn't realize how big of a topic this is. Let's do a new topic, shall we? Uh, what are some rules when you're doing something fair? Meeting your in-laws. Hmm. Church, mosque. Which one? If I do first date, it's going to go on forever. Let's do this one because this is a good topic. So here's a new one. This is disgusting. When you talk to older people, what do you do? Maybe your culture, you have some specific rules. Maybe you have some specific language. I know some cultures have a lot of language that you have to use when you talk to older people. So what are some rules, some good manners and bad manners that we use when we are talking to older people? Like for example, in for me when I was younger, not, not so much now, but when I was younger we say sir, right? Hello sir, or ma'am, or something like that because they're definitely older than you and I was taught you always have to be nice to older people. So you just change, right? Nodding, okay, goes yeah, very nice. You just nod even, just like, yep, mm, 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 <laughs> what time is it? Oh my God. You might nod a lot. Move your head up and down. Mm, mm. Nod. Usually your head. Move head up and down. Slightly. Yes, you might nod. Oh, yes, sir. Mm, interesting. Yes. <laughs> Who? Talk loudly. Is, is that rude or? Depends on the older person. Some older people have trouble hearing, so you might have to talk. About, yes, sir! I think it's very good! You might have to scream at them. You have to talk to them with a quiet tone, okay? You have to be nice. and You do have to talk with respect. And sometimes it's not about the words. It's just about the body language and the, t the sound of your voice, right? Always with respect and love. That's true, Gertie. Always with respect and love, Gertie. Uh, don't interrupt. Listen carefully. Avoid giving suggestions. Yeah, this is good for elder, for older people, right? They they have been alive more th longer than you, so they probably have seen more than you. They know more than you. So you should just shut up and listen, because maybe they'll give you some like good tips. You know what I mean? I think it's just about experience, right? Show engagement. Be engaged. Um, Use polite language, right? You say, would you like? You don't say, do you want to? You say, would you like? Or could I get you, right? Canadians, we're pretty good with the polite language. Be a good listener, yeah, be a good listener. We use appropriate language and we don't raise our voices. Good, nice word, raise, raise your voice. So for example, when you become angry, you raise uh, your voice. Your mother raises her voice when she's angry at you. Good combination of words raise your voice so it's a nice way to say yell we don't say yell we say no raise she raised her voice but it basically means mm, speak loudly possibly angrily when you're angry at someone you might raise your voice I don't like your tone I don't like your tone uh, what else we got here help them if they need something be useful cat older people don't older people older doesn't necessarily mean that they know more than the other young people you're right but I think often they do right they've been on the earth longer than you so I think they've just seen most of the time they've seen quite a bit it's just about age I don't know you just have to respect you should respect older people because they've they've you know, maybe they raised you you know your parents brought you into this world they can take you out so I think and your grandparents brought your parents in so I don't know, I think you have to show respect to older people because they, they started things, you know what I mean, before you did. Uh, what else we got here? 
Uh, don't speak with rudeness. Yes. Don't flirt with older people. Thanks, Jimmy. Show your love and give your time and attention. Yes. Manipulate our intonation. Oh my goodness. We didn't manipulate it. We didn't just change it. Uh, do not correct them. Yeah, do not correct them is probably good advice. Uh, let them talk. You know, sometimes some older people they talk a lot, and but eh, let them go. You know what I mean? Let 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 them be happy. I love to keep smiling when I talk to them. Okay. Don't frown. Yes, frown. Do you guys know this word? Frown. Don't do that. Should always be polite. Frown. Look. Appear angry. Look angry. Uh, what else we got? Address them properly. Yeah. So if you address someone, it's like "Hello, sir," or "Hello, ma'am," or "Hello, miss," or that's that's another way to say address. We say mm, use a title. So for example, I was talking about this in my other class. Um, when I talk to my auntie and my uncle, I say "Uncle Uncle Eddie," or "Auntie Natalia," and I said, if you say uncle and aunt in, for a Canadian English, it's kind of polite. It's, the, it's like a title. It's like Mr. or Mrs. So it's more polite. And for grandma, we don't say grandma. We never say grandma's name. We just say grandma. And that's actually the polite way to say, to be talk to grandma. You say grandma. It's like a title almost. Interesting. Show your love. Yes, of course. Sneezing. Don't sneeze. Who's sneezing? Uh, me? I'm not sneezing. Oh, I'm sniffing. I'm always sniffing. My nose is just never really that clear. Uh, in Italy, we use the third person singular. Okay, so for example, Samuel, uh, you should not say modern words that older adults may not understand. Sure, don't say Insta. Don't say, oh, Grandma, I'm just going to gram this and use Instagram. That's a new word. I just learned that the other day. It's probably old by now. Uh, give them your seat in the transportation. Yes, that's true. You give up your seat. That's a good one because we we do that on the train for sure. A lot of people do this. You should do that. Give up your seat. Give a seat up. So it's a, I guess that's a combination of words. Um, give your seat to someone. Nice one. All right, cool. Very nice. No, 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 no. Okay, I want to jump in. I want to keep going here because I want to. I want to introduce you guys to a few things, and then I want to do what I talked about earlier. I want to do this uh, idea where you make a, a list of manners for your country. But we're not yet. We're not going to do that. So first, let's do this. I'm going to take you to this website here. Uh, so please open up this link here. Right, why is that not working? slow. Uh, I want you to look. So what, what I want to look at now is I want to look at different manners around the world. So what you can do is go to that go to that link and yes offer your assistance is always good advice for older people as well. Uh, so when my computer starts working there we go. I want you to go to that link that I sent you. I'll send it one more time. And I want you to read together with me as we look at different manners around the world because this is kind of interesting. So let's, this one's kind of cool. So let's start with number one. Trash. Trash is garbage. So trash on the floor. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Here we go. All right, trash on the floor. Don't be surprised if the food of your Spanish tapas bar, maybe in Spain, is soiled. Soiled is like, there's a lot. Soiled with garbage, basically littered with garbage papers, napkins, cigarettes, and food debris, extra food stuff. Uh, don't they have any garbage bins, garbage cans in Spain? Uh, what looks like a lack of hygiene, it looks, like, it looks like they don't care about health and being clean, a lack of hygiene, is in fact an old tradition from the 19th century. The more waste you have, the more garbage you have on the floor of your bar, your pub, your bar, the more you could brag, show off, you can tell other people about how many customers you have. You can show off about how many clients you had in front of your competitors. So basically, if your bar is super dirty, uh, you can kind of go to other restaurant owners, other bar owners, and be like, look at my floor. It's so dirty because I'm so busy, so it's actually a way to brag. Kind of interesting, right? So kind of disgusting, but kind of interesting. It says this tradition, this, this habit is still alive in some places. You can, even, you can even spot, you can even see waiters 
throwing what's left garbage from the table onto the ground. So when the customers leave, the waiters actually throw it on the ground. Interesting, right? I don't know. I thought that was any anyway, anybody from Spain. Anybody been to Spain and seen that? Ger Gertie says it's the same in the movie theater. That's interesting, man. So you just throw. So it's like it's a good movie. So you just like throw your popcorn on the floor. Uh, anyways, lots of good vocab in here. Soiled with garbage, right? That's a good one. But anyways, I'm not going to focus on the vocab. If you like any of this vocab, keep the link and look at it. Read through it later. I'm going to go through this one. Number two. Eating noisily, being loud when you eat, a noisy eater. In Japan, you should slurp. Word of the day is slurp. We learned that word today. In Japan, you should. So go to Japan. You'll love it. I've lived in Japan. It was fun. Uh, also in Taiwan, you can do it. Probably some other countries as well. In Japan, you should slurp your noodles noisily. So when you eat noodles, you can make noises. Like you did when you were a child with spaghetti. You would make noises. Because it means that you love what you're eating. You're very happy with the food. Maybe some delicious Japanese ramen. It is perfectly acceptable, no problem, to do so, but only with noodles and soup. So if you have other foods, you shouldn't make noises, but if you're eating soup, it's okay to slurp your soup, make some noises. If you go to a Japanese restaurant or even a Taiwanese restaurant, uh, you'll hear it everywhere. It's super common. And even when I'm here in Canada and I go to a Japanese place, I can hear people making noises. Uh, I love it. I think it's great. Because why not? I don't know. It's hot. Sometimes it's hot. There's actually a technique that I've seen Japanese people do. When the noodles are hot, they actually do this thing where they kind of like, they suck in air in their mouth and it helps to cool off the noodles while they're eating. It's a different level. Different level of soup. What do you guys think about that one? Making noises when you're eating soup. I find it refreshing. I think it's finally freedom. I can make the noise. You know what I mean? Belching compliment. Yeah. Hate number three, J JV doesn't like any of these things. Uh, Albina, here we go. Uh, now we get some cultural stuff. In Russia, take off your shoes when you enter any home. Sounds like good advice. But I think in Mexico, people don't take off their shoes. And maybe in Brazil as well, people don't always. So maybe there's some, some mixed culture there. People don't always take off their shoes. Okay, well, anyways, uh, so there we go. Burping at the end of your meal. Blah. We already talked about that one. In, now here's what it says about number three. In some Asian and Maghreb countries, it's not impolite to burp. You can burp at the end of your meal. It simply means, it basically means you, have a good, you had a good meal. You have eaten well. But if you're traveling to those countries, be sure to always check before in advance what's the custom, what's the rule to avoid any mistakes, false steps. This is not a generality, this is not usual, and remember, note, that the burp is not a must. You don't have to burp. They just consider you shouldn't restrain. Keep everything inside if you feel like it. So if you want to burp, burp. But it's not like you should burp. It's not like everybody should start burping. Uh, but if you've got a burp, burp. What do you think about that one? That one's kind of, I don't know, it's a bodily thing, right? If you've got a burp, you got to burp. Wafa, you have that? Where are you from, Wafa? Burping at the end, so it's possible to do that. Wafa, tell us the origin of your country so we can all go there and burp together. What else we got here? Judith, I have seen in a restaurant all you can eat when children throw, throw away food, T-H-R-O-W, throw away food everywhere, and nobody says a word. I was awestruck. Interesting. Yeah, that would be a weird one, right? If you saw people throwing away food on the ground and that was normal, you would be like, is going on. Uh, cat, gross. Samuel, I have been to Spain. Spanish people were so proud about throwing food on the, the ground. There you go. It's been confirmed. Samuel's been there, and apparently in some places in Spain, they do throw garbage on the ground. Gertie, in some places in the U.S. too? Really? Where? Where in the U.S. would they do that? Pilar, not in my country. No, 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 no. That's terrible. All right, next one. Number four, eating with your hands. In some countries, it's totally normal, perfectly normal, to use only your hands, or to be more specific, your right hand, to eat some dishes. You don't use your left hand, and if you don't know why, we will explain. In Ethiopia, for example, everybody eats from the same plate. So I guess there's one big plate, and everybody can eat with their hands from the same plate with their hand, right hand. Be sure to use your right hand, because the left one is usually considered 
unclean, not clean. Because in some countries, people will take this hand and they will put it back here and they will give a little wipe. So it's the business hand, the business back there, and this is the clean hand, the eating hand. Maybe somebody can confirm that. India, that's the, one, that's the country I was thinking of. I'm sure there's a few others that have a similar rule and that might be where it comes from. All right, there we go. Bushra, in Libya, it's okay to eat with your hands. If you want to burp without any problem, then come to Morocco. All right, everybody, go to Morocco. Visit Brahim because you can burp and it's all cool. Harry, Harry is enjoying the business. Yeah, business. Which business? The number two business, if you wanted to know which business, Harry. Uh, okay, so there we go. Low eye. Yeah, all right. And I think this is my last one for me. Uh, arriving late. In some countries, it's customary, it's a rule to arrive late when you are invited for dinner. Didn't know that. In Japan, apparently, one hour. But Japanese are always on time. So even if it's like, okay, so you don't come exactly when they have a time, you're going to come one hour late. But I know that that Japanese person will come exactly one, they will be on time late. They will be late on time, if that makes sense. They will come exactly one hour because Japanese are perfectionists. So they will be exactly one hour late. In Tanzania, between 15 to 30 minutes. And maybe in your country, who knows? I don't know what you know as a general rule. I'm not sure what the rule would be in Canada. Good to know, in general, never arrive early to your host place. That's a pretty good rule, right? Uh, what do you guys got? Uh, not in England. Okay, so maybe no arriving, arriving late. In time or on time? Uh, so on time. Most of the time in English we use on time. In time, when does Superman arrive? So before somebody, before the building is coming down, Superman always arrives in time, like just before. But on time means at the correct time. So it's a little bit of a difference there. Uh, Braze, I'm watching your video online from Ecuador. What's up? What's up, Braze? How you doing? Uh, so there we go. There were your manners. So here's what I'm going to get you guys to do before we jump in and do the cultural one. Uh, I would like you guys to find me some more manners from around the world. So here we go. Please do this. I want you to go online, as I usually do, and I want you to search manners around the world. And maybe you'll see the website that I used. Maybe you'll find another one. Uh, but go ahead. I want you to go online, and I want you to do that. I want you to find some other manners from around the world. Uh, different countries, maybe countries you've never seen before. So go ahead search manners around the world. And what did you find? Uh, Loaya, when we use at time, uh, we don't use at time, never. Uh, socially, it's not acceptable in our country. We also eat with our hands. As well, we share one plate to eat, to eat with approximately 10 people. So there we go, okay, more hand eaters. Uh, so there you go, go ahead, what else can you find? So search uh, manners around the world, and I think you will find a lot of websites, there's a Slurpee, manners around the world, and go to some of those websites, and there's quite a few here, and you'll find, so go ahead and find me some new manners from around the world. Uh, yes, we do say about time, you're right, Gozia, but it's like, it's a different, it's not a common thing that we use all the time. Okay. Um, uh, Bar, where are you from? I am from this wonderful place called Vancouver, Canada, buddy. Let's throw up a picture of Vancouver, Canada. This wonderful place. It doesn't look like this most of the time because it's raining most of the time. It's also known as Raincouver. But that is a view of where I live. And if you see in the background, I actually went skiing, snowboarding on this mountain not so long ago. So that's one of the good things about living here. Uh, what else we got here? All right, so here we go. Pilar's got one. To tip is bad. So basically, you guys know tip when you pay a little bit of money after uh, you have a you go to a restaurant and you tip. You pay some money for the service, and apparently tipping, uh, giving extra money at a restaurant or bar, giving extra money for a service is bad in Japan. Didn't know that. I feel like I've tried to tip in Japan, but maybe maybe just don't do it. Why would it be rude? That's a weird one. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, Mustafa. Manners. Find some manners. Hello, Tony. Uh, Azam. Hi. In Islamic countries, use used 
you should use your right hand from your new student from Afghanistan. Welcome, new student from Afghanistan. Um, in places like Turkey and Saudi Arabia, it's perfectly acceptable to burp after your meal, which tells the chef that you ate plenty, you ate a lot, and you enjoyed every bite. Very nice. Okay, Turkey and Saudi Arabia, so it's okay to burp. Uh, all Arab countries eat with the right hand. The left is forbidden. You cannot. Uh, Carlos, you need to check your language <laughs> there, buddy. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, French kiss. Check your spelling of the last word that you wrote there. Waffa waffa. Remove your shoes at the door when you arrive. Yep. Usually good manners. I think some countries that depends though. Never show the sole, the sole, the bottom, the bottom of your shoe in Arab culture. Also Thai culture from Thailand. That's a big no-no. And don't show the bottom of your feet to people. It's quite rude. Harry, don't leave chopsticks stood upright in your food like sticks of incense. This symbolizes death and should never be done. I did know that one. So whenever you go and you eat Japanese or probably Chinese or Korean or any place that uses chopsticks, normally don't take the chopsticks and go like this and put them in your food because it's kind of like death. It's a bad thing. What else? Have I ever been to the Ukraine? No, I haven't. But uh, part of me, part of my background is Ukrainian, Ukrainian and Polish. So uh, I've had some food, some good Ukrainian food, but never been to the Ukraine yet. Uh, Michael, a smile can mean something different in Korea. Smiling at a stranger is very offensive. Really? It means you think they are unintelligent. So if you smile at someone in Korea, they think, they will think that you're stupid. Maybe, who knows? Australia. A single male passenger should sit in the front of a taxi. Okay, I guess it's a little bit rude. If you're in the back of the taxi, it seems like you're a prince or a princess and you don't deserve that. In Aus There's no princes and princesses in Australia, if you didn't know. They're pretty tough people, so maybe that makes sense. Uh, what else we got here? Loai in the Middle East, they don't shake with the left hand. Okay, so again, you invite, you pay. Ghana. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Marjorie, spit to say hello. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm going to put that. Spit. Not spit to say hello, but just spit. So if you didn't know how to say this in English, it's that's spit. I'm not going to explain that. I don't know how to explain it. Spit is spit. Awesome. I would love to spit to say hello. It would just once. It would be funny. Uh, in Poland, man, a man, men kiss women on the hand to show respect. Is that true in Poland? It's pretty old school. It's pretty traditional. You invite, you pay, Ghana again, yeah. Never celebrate your 14th birthday in Ukrainian culture. Didn't know that. JB retracted something. Germany, humor is not appreciated in a business context. Germans don't like jokes, guys. Don't make any jokes. No, that's not true. Uh, Ger but Germans are a little bit more serious. Kind of, I feel like they're very similar to Japanese people. Very efficient, good, good at building things on time. Very similar. I think a German person could marry a Japanese person fairly easily. Avoiding the salt shaker. Okay. Uh, Mudasar, Kent, have you ever been abroad? If not, where would you like to go if you could go anywhere in the world? Mudasar, I've been abroad a few times. Uh, I've been to about 20 countries so far. I've lived abroad in Japan, Taiwan, England, and Australia for three years. Not bad. Uh, and then, like I said, done some traveling. So if I could go anywhere in the world now, probably Turkey. Turkey's on my list. That looks like an interesting one. Maybe in Indonesia. There's a lot of places I really want to go. Dale, in the US, uh, always wait for the host to sit down before you take your seat. Okay. I'm going to have to cut it here because here's what I really want to do with the last little bit of time is this. I want a list of this. So please go ahead and you tell me, let's, what time is it in Canada? 2.52 p.m. Vancouver time. This is what I want from you guys. I want you to tell me. So think about your country. I'm going to go to the old Canada, eh? So here we go. I'm going to think about my country. Here's Canada. There it is. You know the flag. So here, I'm going to teach you about Canada today. So I'm going to give you a few rules. And I want you guys to think about rules from your country. So if you were coming to Canada, what should you know about manners? And if I were going to your country, what should I know about manners in your country? So I want you to make a list about your country. And I want you to give me a list of, I don't know, let's say we got eight minutes left. 
let's do about five. Five important things that you should know before someone comes to your country. So I'm going to give you my number one. So I'm going to do Canada. So number one, uh, number one thing you should do, or one of the things, it's not number one, okay, it's just a list, but one of the things you should do is say thank you to the bus driver when you get off the bus. This is Canadian culture. So when you get off the bus, you have to say thank you to the bus driver, the guy who drives the bus. That's a, that's a pretty good, that's good manners in Canada. Everyone does it. And all the international students who come here, they're kind of shocked. They're like, I can't believe you guys say uh, thank you to the bus driver. Like, yeah, it's normal. We always do it. Number two, Canada. Learn, say sorry all the time. Always sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sometimes, even when it's not your fault. It's crazy. We do this like crazy people. We say sorry, sorry, sorry. Canadians are known for saying that very often. I don't know why we do it. It's kind of weird. So if I'm, in, if, if I'm standing here first and I see somebody walking towards me, I might actually see them and I'll step out of their way and I'll say sorry like I was in their way. But I wasn't in their way. I was there first and I've done this. This is my story. We, we say this like crazy. We just say sorry even when we don't, we don't have to say it. I didn't do anything wrong. I was standing there first and I move out of someone's way and say sorry. It's crazy. We're crazy. All right. So what else we got here? You tell me a little bit about yourself. Number three. What else can I tell you about Canada? Um, excuse me, sorry, we use those a lot. What else can I tell you about Canada? Um, you have to use, you have to, I don't know. You tell me about yours, I'll think about mine. Give me some of yours. So tell, first of all, so tell me your country, write your country name, and then give us the advice, one piece of advice uh, that we should know if we go to your country. So it would look like this, it would be something like, like this so I would write in the chat I'll go Canada and then I'll put my tip that's my tip so I want you guys to do the same thing your country name and then the tip tell us about what is the thing that you should do in your country all right so but I want your country not not another country I want your culture so if I go to France if I go to Brazil if I go to the Dominican Republic or Saudi Arabia what is some advice that I should know before I go there Okay, and I gotta think more. What else? Canadians, Canadians, what do they what do they do? Oh here we go, Lolly's got one. Lolly says, in France, don't ask your guest to bring food. It's a no-no. Oh okay, well in Canada, Lolly, we bring a gift when someone invites us to our house. So Canada, bring a gift when invited for dinner at someone's house. It's kind of nice. We always do this. Bring a bottle of wine or, you know, just something. So here's another one about Canada. Bring a bottle of wine or a gift when you go to someone's house. Carlos, Peru, please do not drink water from the tap, T-A-P, from the pipe, because Americans and Europeans established normal water to drink from pipes. So basically, don't drink tap, T-A-P, don't drink tap water. Judith, U.S., tipping restaurant and bar menus indicate prices without sale tax. Tip is 10 to 20 percent. I agree. Uh, in Canada, we also have tipping culture. And I believe it's, how much is tipping? Tipping in Canada. I don't tip everything, I'll be honest. I think it's a weird culture. I don't know why we have to tip. It's just making the customer pay more for the service that, yeah, it's weird. Tip percentage Canada. I feel like it's like 12 to 14. 15 to 20, <laughs> come on. How much money? Tip, yeah, okay. Taken, taken my tip, uh, 15 to 20. I don't tip, I usually tip 10%, I'm cheap. Because I don't, I don't agree with tipping and I only tip in certain situations. When I'm at a coffee shop, no. Pizza place, no. But if you give continual service, then I tip, of course. That's okay. So, uh, yeah, tipping. I'd say 15 to 20. 
Uh, what else we got? Ukraine never sit in front of the corner of the table. I can't understand this, but that's that's the rule. So if there's a table and it's square like this, you shouldn't sit here. Don't sit here because it's bad luck. Okay, there we go. Harry, don't interrupt or try to talk over senior people. I think that's a pretty good rule for a lot of places. Social ranking is taken seriously in China and it is quite tied to the age of the person, yes. I know some cultures are very serious. Yeah, I mean, in my culture as well. You don't, if an older person is talking, you don't interrupt them. You wait till they're done. Oh no, Lolly, no doggy bags? Uh, can Canadians love the doggy bag, right? Man, classic. Used to bring doggy bag for my dog. Uh, alcohol laws, Judith, I believe that's the USA again. Alcohol laws, drinking age is, the drinking age is set at 21 for both sexes and is fairly well enforced with ID checks. Is that manners or is that a law? Um, Pilar, Colombians are very clean eaters. Don't eat with your fingers. People may find this offensive. And offensive, if you don't know that word, it means it makes, makes people a little bit angry or feel upset. Gozia, yes, it's a weird superstition because you will stay without a husband when you sit in the corner. Okay, oh my goodness. So if I sat in the corner, I'd be single forever, oh, rough. It's not bad luck, but it's considered to be the reason of not getting married in the future in Ukraine. So Ukrainians are a little bit superstitious is what I'm getting here. A little bit of a superstitious group. France, it is not very classy to share the bill. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. We don't have this in Canada. It kind of depends on the situation, but I can understand how some people would say, no, I'll pay or you pay. There's no sharing. It's just weird. It's just easier. Maybe it's just easier if one person pays and the next person pays next time. Judith, loud cell phone usage. Yeah. It is considered to be very rude to speak loudly on cell phones anywhere. Yeah, and I lived in Japan and it was like you never, even like kids would do it because kids are rude but people on the train they'd be like no, 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 no. and then just like hang up and don't talk on the phone it's super rude but in Canada I see people talking on the bus on the train just being really loud but in, in Japan it never happens and uh, I'm guessing that's in the US that Judith is talking about as well Gertrudis in the Dominican Republic everything is valid not a problem is the Dominican slogan I like it I like the liberalism of that that's great Ali, we never tip here at all. We try to reduce any price. Okay. Judith, personal space. Americans usually talk to each other from a distance of about two feet. Okay, so if you're in America, two feet. That's the distance. Uh, any closer is viewed as uncomfortable. So there's a limit with how close you can get with your Americans. And Pilar, in Colombia, don't open foreign refrigerators. What, what do you mean by foreign refrigerators? Like a refrigerator that is not yours? You wouldn't open it? That might make sense. If it's not yours, don't touch it, right? All right, guys, very nice. We've gotten a little bit of that, so I think we've done everything we needed to do. Uh, introduce you to some manners around the world. We talked a little bit about the vocab that you can use to talk about it. And uh, yeah, good manners, and we, now we know what to do when we go to your country as well, right? Mudasa's got one more. Uh, if you come to my come to my country for the first time, one thing that you should know is that people are always transparent and approachable, so you can talk to them. Uh, so you should say hi to people in the street. Cool. Well, I like that. So you just can be like, hey, what's up? Hey, how are you doing? Hey, you, hey, what's up? I like that. I like the friendliness. That's great. Almost every Ukrainian speaks in Russian, and one quarter knows English. Good to know. And France, no ice cubes in your glass of wine. That's, that makes sense. French are very picky about their wine. No ice, don't you? And probably if you're an Italian, you don't ask for ketchup ever, right? Something like that. Scroll over, please. Scroll over. What would you like to scroll over? Pilar, I'm not sure what you want there. Uh, but okay. Anyways, I think, I think we've done what we needed to do. We talked about manners. We talked about manners in yours and manners in mine. We talked about some language to talk about it. Ah, the vocab. The vocab is all there. Burp, belch, slurp. Put something on blatantly on a sugar coat, an acquaintance with an A-N. Yes, uh, that's what he was asking about, an acquaintance. 
right? All these words that we use. And remember, let me give you the document one more time if you want any of this amazing stuff that we talked about today and you want to go over it again. Here it is for you one more time. And there it is. How do you predict correct, correct, I can't speak anymore. How do you pronounce correctly? Often, often. So we don't even say the T. Some people say it if you speak slowly, you'll say often, but most of the time it's just often. You just say it really quick. All right, there we go. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope your manners have improved. No pointing. I was taught when I did my international English teaching course that you should never point at people from different countries because it could be rude. And sometimes I do that, well, actually, I do that kind of every day. I kind of do one of these, and I've never had a problem. So I'm, I don't know what's going on. It must be some weird international rule. That's it for me. Have yourselves a wonderful day. We'll catch you again. Same Batman time, Batman place tomorrow, uh, 3 o'clock. No, sorry, what time? 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow for another exciting Smart Topic. Have yourselves an amazing day. Stay kind to everyone. Don't be a noisy eater or eat like a pig. Big hug to all of you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.